I think I just dealt with the worst gaming session. Yeah, I think this one counts. It's the first gaming session I can ever recall where it ended in an arrest. The character. Today I had a day off, so I decided to check out this gaming group a friend was in. He said the DM now nicknamed Psycho DM was a little weird, but seemed alright. Last night I was told to make a level 5 character, preferably someone who could tank, heal, or was a skill monkey the primary was a bard, at the moment. Enter Diego Ashalfes, former scout for the Imperial Army and now an acolyte in the services of the Falang. He is a rather frail looking human youth with a windblown shock of ash grey hair hence the nickname Ash. Wearing only the robes common to many of the Falang's priests and wielding only a worn looking, if well made bastard sword at his side. A sturdy, if also well worn traveling pack sits comfortably on his back as he strides the road. The only curious thing about him, aside from the bastard sword, is a red ribbon wrapping one arm. It ends well short of his hand, but you'd almost swear it was occasionally letting a drop of blood fall. Looking behind him, you can see that this is the case, as every few hundred paces or so you can just make out dried blood following in his footsteps. In game terms, he is a human rogue 3 slash cleric 2. He started out as a rogue, and he's found god after a particularly nasty battle, which resulted in the cursed ribbon being placed on his arm by his foe. The curse is slowly sapping his life from him. In game terms he only heals at half the normal rate for a character of his level. At the end of every day he must take a just a sip from a potion he's learned to brew DC 19 craft. Alchemy check, with the sale cost of 300 gold for 5 flasks worth, with me being able to brew 5 flasks with 1 check or take 1d4-1 temporary con damage, no save. The potion lasts for roughly 30 sips before I have to brew more. The most frightening aspect of the curse for Ash is that the magic used to make it was incredibly rare, and normal avenues for removing curses just don't want to work. A diviner has told me that the only way he knows of to break the curse is to kill the one who gave it to me. Psycho DM told me to make an interesting character with plot hooks, so I unleashed my imagination. A cursed soldier who's found God, looking for the cure to his curse? Plot hooks are plenty with this one. The only thing I asked Psycho DM for in return for this curse was an extra feat, that featuring Bing skill focus craft alchemy. The game. At this time, I'd like to point out that I was the new guy to the group, and the only person I knew beforehand was a friend who was playing a halfling sorcerer. He'd been with Psycho DM since they'd started this campaign, 4 sessions ago. So, the game is about ready to begin. We're all seated around my living room table normally games happen at Psycho DM's house, but it was being painted. Bowls of chips rest amid plastic and lead Warhammer miniatures and everybody is getting along fine. Psycho DM had already approved the character's backstory and character sheet including the curse and the mechanics behind it and the potion. When he asks to see my character sheet just to double check the stats and such. I don't have a problem with this as I hadn't changed anything, so I hand it over and I see him frown. He then hands the character sheet back to me and informs me that I'll be taking 1d6 temporary con damage a day, to make things more interesting. This bothers me a little bit as that meant 3 decent rolls could kill me or pretty much any character, but I don't complain. It doesn't make a huge difference, and I've got 2 metal flasks of the potion buried safely in my backpack, plus another metal flask of the potion in a side pouch under my robes. I can brew up another batch by taking 10 on an alchemy roll, provided 8 hours of not doing anything and access to a small city to hunt the ingredients down which would take a successful gather information check. After the party meets up and gets the introductions out of the way we're all on a mission to nail some minor orc warlord, we head off in the direction of a city where we can get an exact fix on the warlord's location. Random encounter time, the game has been on for half an hour, so some of the players are eager to get into a good scrap. We run into a group of 8 bandits. 4 of them have long swords, 2 have short bows, 2 have spears, and all of them are wearing studded leather. I make a token attempt at dissuading the bandits from attacking, which they ignore completely. I move up and flank one of the bandits with the party's fighter and sneak attack damage kicks in, because he's flanked. The guy drops with a single swing of my bastard sword, as I dealt him 20 damage. This is where Psycho DM's first complaint comes in. He tries to tell me that as a cleric, I can't use sneak attack damage, as it goes against my god's religion. I point out that either way, I'm putting holes in someone who's attacking travelers on the road, and that I'm pretty sure Farlang doesn't like bandits using his roads to harm people. Plus he's neutral, not good, so I doubt he really gives a damn about the way I put holes in the people abusing his roads. 
Psycho DM finally agrees, but I did notice that all the other bandits seemed to be a level or two higher. I guess I'd been fighting at the flimsy rookie bandit. It might have been an honest mistake on Psycho DM's part, as he might have forgotten to adjust for the fact that I'm one of the two tanks in the party and I have a 2d6 damage when dealing with flanked and or flat-footed enemies. However, one of the bandits with a spear scored a critical hit against me behind Psycho DM's screen and it's at this point that Psycho DM announces he is going to start using a special critical hit system. He rolls and the strike hits my back. So that means it hits my backpack. Shock and awe, when he rolls to see which item is completely destroyed, it's a flask or the potion. The hit hurts on top of all this, but a cure light wounds on myself and I'm still up. This bothered Psycho DM for some reason, but whatever. After the fight when I take off my pack, I discover that the critical hit that took out my one flask had managed to hit both, because they were packed together. At least, he points out, you've probably gotten your dose for the day. Oh, thanks for the help. I'm sure it'll make a huge difference. So, night rolls on. I tell Psycho DM I'm taking my dose and going to bed. Holding the D6 and I'm sure I knew what for he looks shocked, and tells me I don't have any more. The bandit got both of the flasks in my bag. I tell him I've got a third flask of the stuff that's not in my backpack, but inside pouch entirely separate from my backpack. Hence why it wasn't included in the item list he rolled on to see which items were destroyed when my backpack got ganked. So, I repeat that I'm taking my daily dose of medicine and then getting some sleep. So, a few days in game pass by as we travel, no further incidents. We get to a large city, and we're told we're going to have to meet with the local lord to get some information about the orc warlord operating south of his city. A couple weeks south of the city, to put a fine point on it. Unfortunately, it'll take all day to get in to meet the lord. The party says they just want to skip straight to the meeting, and I tell Psycho DM I'm not going, I want to do something else in the city. He seems surprised, and asks why. I politely tell him that while my party is waiting to speak with the lord, I'm going to use the time to get the ingredients I need and make my potions. I don't need to roleplay the stuff, I add, so it won't take much time. I doubt the lord wants me dripping blood all over his nice rugs while I wait, so I may as well do the party a favor and not make him angry, thinking this is settled. I ask him how much it's going to cost me to rent a kitchen to have access to the fire I need to brew 5 flasks worth and what the gather information DC is to find the alchemical ingredients. He tells me I wouldn't skip out on the chance to meet a famous lord. I point out that I wasn't going to put off making more of my potion unless I absolutely had to, and this was a perfect opportunity. Fine, he says. I'm forced to pay 10 gold to rent a huge kitchen like 3 stoves, which strikes me as odd but I'm an adventurer, I've got more than enough gold to choke a dragon. He says that the gather information DC is 19 and then has me roll. I make it, having rolled a 16 before my rather extensive modifiers. He then tries to tell me I've failed, as my cursed arm keeps creeping people out. I return that I'm not dripping enough blood for people to really notice it immediately it's not gushing, I'm losing a drop of blood maybe once every couple minutes for one, and if it were more difficult it should have been included in the DC, so he has me roll again, this time versus DC 21, and 15 before modifiers sees my way to gathering the information, and I can see his blood pressure rising. I inform him that while I'm visiting the herbalist shops I'm buying enough ingredients for two batches. He says this will increase the DC accordingly, and I point out yes, he has already said that if I ever needed to brew more than one batch at once. The DC for all of the batches would be a 3, something I can easily manage with my 12 bonus to craft alchemy. So it's now time to roll for the brewing of the potions. I tell him I'm going to use the take 10 option which automatically brings me to the requisite 22 I need for a success as I'm not hurried and don't want to mess up. He flips out. He actually breaks his pencil in his grip and asks to speak with me in another room. I agree, and we go into my living room. He tells me that I'm being a terrible player, and I'm trying to negate a disadvantage I've given myself to gain a free featuring. He tells me that he's going to take the featuring away from me, because I'm not role playing my curse. I point out that the only real use I had for the featuring was as something to help alleviate the curse. And that taking a minus 1d6 temporary con damage every day if I don't have access to my potion is not something that is going to be treated lightly by my character. By taking this curse so seriously, seriously enough I'd want to skip out on meeting a famous lord, I am role playing my curse exactly as it should be. 
Missing it for 3 days might just be enough to completely kill my character, so of course it's something he's going to be paranoid about. If he's extraordinarily lucky, he might last a little under 2 weeks without his potions. I add that he's not going to march off into the wilderness with our objective at least 2 weeks away, with only one flask. That would be begging for death. He tells me that the featuring is gone, so the brewing failed. I tell him that if the featuring goes, the curse goes with it, and I'm not going to have it any other way. The curse is meant to be an interesting, if rarely used weakness. If I'm imprisoned for some reason, I get sick very quickly if I don't have my potions. If I'm separated from my possessions, I get sick very quickly. It's not meant to be something he constantly has to worry about all the damned time, and that if it was I would have had the mechanics we'd agreed on for the curse be reflected differently. If he didn't want me to have the curse the way it was, I would have not bothered with it. I don't want my character on the verge of death all the time. It's supposed to be a stabilized illness, not an out of control illness. He finally concedes the point, and we return to the table. Surprise, everybody thinks I'm a witch. Never mind the fact mages are as common as warriors, we passed a wizard's guild on the way into town, and we saw cleric using his spells to help a farmer not a day behind us. I now have a small group of angry peasants outside my door, with the law. I calmly tell Psycho DM that I'm going to put a small cut on my arm, and that I'm going to walk outside. The peasants say I'm a devil who leaves the blood of children in my wake, and the town guard now needs to ask me a few questions. I look surprised, and then pretend to notice some blood drip down my arm. I calmly tell the guards that I'm a simple healer and priest, but I have a medical condition that means my wounds don't close naturally. I just didn't notice I was bleeding because it was such a small scratch. Psycho DM tells me to roll a bluff check between ground teeth. I roll a natural 20 which isn't an automatic success, but it might as well be against these guards. My bluff check, thanks to 3 levels of rogue, was pretty high. Presumably a 20 for their sense motive still wouldn't have beaten my bluff check I've never once seen these rolls he's been making, because he finally tells me I pass after a long silence. The guards disperse the crowd, and I walk back inside the kitchen where my potions are brewing. The breaking point. For some reason the guy I'd rented the place off had come into the room and knocked the potions over, ruining my ingredients and about 6 hours of in-game time. I think Psycho DM tried to tell me something about how he was drunk and I should go meet up with the party but at this point, I as a player stand up and tell Psycho DM the game is over. I quit. He tells me that this is fine, I wasn't invited back to the next session anyways. He goes on to add, in a lofty voice, that he was wondering when I'd get the hint. He turns to his players who are now putting away their things as if expecting to continue the game. Bear in mind oh gentle readers, that this entire thing has been happening in my own home. We are sitting at my table and in my oven is a 5 pound lasagna we were cooking for dinner. When the other players notice Psycho DM not moving, there's a heavy silence. Psycho DM calmly speaks I'm sure that lanky bugger has no problems with us finishing the session, guys. It's not like he's going to kick fellow gamers out. Besides, he can't eat all the lasagna himself, haha. <laughs> I don't say a word. I'm so shocked at the stupidity that has just dropped from this man's mouth. Finally I tell him that while no, I'm not going to kick them out, I will be kicking him out. The others are free to leave or stay for food and gaming of their own volition, but he is certainly no longer welcome in my home. He is required to leave, right the hell now. He laughs in my face and says that I can't make him leave, so, he's now threatening me in my own home, fine. I tried to be civil about it but I didn't owe this jerk a single damned thing. Right away I pick up the cordless phone and dial 911. I've asked nicely, and I'm not about to wreck my furniture by physically wrestling this guy outside. He was watching me on the phone. I guess he didn't think far enough ahead to figure out who I was calling. After a statement like that, when the operator answers, I calmly tell her that I've just asked a visitor who's no longer welcome to leave my home and he's told me that I can't make him leave. Would it be at all possible to send a patrol car by so that a police officer can make him leave, as I don't want to assault him? She tells me a car is on the way, and I hang up. He calmly declares that it was all a hoax, that I would never call the cops on a fellow gamer. I tell him once more that he should leave, as I'm not going to press charges if he agrees to leave right now. He stubbornly sits in the chair, and tries unsuccessfully to get the others to continue the game. They sit around the table, completely shell-shocked. After maybe 5 or 10 minutes there's a knock at the door. Outside my home there's flashing red and blue lights. 
I open the door, and simply tell the officers the situation in the plainest terms possible. I don't want him charged with anything, I just want him out of my home. They tell him he has to leave and he does after he gathers up his stuff. He tried to take a couple of my Warhammer miniatures, but I corrected him and the other players backed me on that. I make certain he has everything before he leaves. I thank the officers and chat with them for a couple minutes, and then they leave as well. I don't even want to file a report, I just wanted to avoid an incident that might require one. The return. 10 minutes later, we're all hanging out in my dining room. This would have been the 5th session for them and now that they'd seen this display, they'd pretty much all agreed amongst themselves that Psycho DM would not be gaming with them in the future. We hear a furious knocking on the door, and someone is screaming about how he's left something and I'd better give it back right now. I look out the window and it's Psycho DM. Again I call the cops and this time I'm informed that they'll be taking him into custody. I didn't even leave my house until after the cops the same pair who'd been over before rolled up. For a moment it looked like he was about to try to run, but I guess he figured out that the in shape cops would catch his out of shape ass pretty easily. They escort him to the car, cuff his hands, and put him in the back. I spoke with the cops for a little while longer, and though he's going to have an impressive criminal record of petty crimes there's nothing major he can be charged with. Most guys like him get nailed with big things when they try to run, or resist arrest. Looks like he's going to get out of jail sometime tonight, when they've properly processed him. They take my statement, and get the rest of the people there to sign something agreeing with my version of events. They didn't want much paperwork on this one either, I guess. After that incident, the group and I hung out and played some final stand by Tim Denis. I don't think I'll be seeing any of them again except for the friend playing the halfling sork, but it was a really nice session after Psycho DM got booted. God, I really wish my role playing was as functional as those guys at Critical Miss. In which the worst session comes back to haunt me. Sort of. First, it's well within your interest to read the worst session ever. It contains the story referenced here. So, the worst session ever came back to visit. See, a couple of the gamers we usually play with are heading out east for 8 months, due to a temporary job placement, so me and my regular group invited a couple we met at a local chapters to come form a new group. The couple seemed like a decent enough group, so we invited them to dinner and gaming tonight. My two friends Steve and Tammy weren't going to their family's place for dinner until tomorrow night, and Diana was left all alone because her boy toy flew out to Vancouver for the weekend. The couple mentioned that they had nothing to do for the weekend as well while I was picking up the 4 EPHB, so it seemed like a match made in heaven. Things went well, for the most part. I've got a standing rule now, whenever I bring a new person in, to run a quick, 3-4 to four hour one shot session before integrating them into an existing campaign. So tonight we played a game of final stand to see how the pair meshed with my other 3 players and see if we could get along with them. Things appear to be moving along quite nicely. We played a 3 hour game, and ate dinner. Then, as we were drinking our coffee, we got into a casual conversation about the worst gaming experiences. Steve, Tammy, and Diana all know about Psycho GM you may remember Steve a short blaster, but the new guy seemed to be sure that he had a worse story, before he'd even heard mine. I simply raised my eyebrow and added a dollop of Baylor's to my coffee, certain I'd trump him. Little did I know how right I was. So it seems that a year or two back, he got invited to another GM's game by a friend. He had a wonderful character cooked up with a unique curse, and as a courtesy he wound up hosting the game. Said GM then booted him mid-session and tried to continue playing the man's home, complete with an expectation that the promised dinner would still be delivered. The whole situation ended with the police dragging the GM kicking and screaming from the man's house and charges being pressed. The crazed GM even had the audacity to return and pelt a brick through my guest's window. Of course, he finished, he had a great story to tell. He even had a character sheet framed at home. If we ever swung by, he was sure we'd be interested in seeing it. Now of course, my friends and I recognized the story immediately, even if he switched some details. Ash's curse wasn't a ribbon, it was a knife to the heart, and he was a straight fighter 5, not a rogue 3 slash cleric 2. I think he was also cooking a roast, not a lasagna. When my turn finally came around, I just smiled and admitted that his story was probably the worst I'd heard of. About 10 minutes later, when everyone was leaving, my buddy Steve decided to slyly call the guy on it. Hey Lanky, Steve asked with an evil grin, tapping Ash's framed character sheet in my front door hallway. How long are you going to keep this thing around? The guy read the sheet and went quite pale. 
Despite his cheerful goodbye, I suspect I won't be seeing him again. It's kinda amazing, though. I did a Google search on the worst gaming session, and apparently my experience actually comes in at 2. I think it's awesome that events from my life are now being plagiarized by other people. Fasapum. I be lanky bugger or that lanky bugger, if you prefer. I be back. Learn how to make an avatar as cool as mine, right now. You know, I don't know if it's, if it, is it like this in all, like, different communities? Because I've came across this quite a few times of, like, you know, genuinely really toxic, cancerous players. Like, you know, I, I only play 40k, just so you know, you know, I'm, I'm really in 40k. I'm more of a bit of a hobby hero, you could say. Um, I do play sometimes, but I really haven't been playing much. I have hardly played 8th edition. I was only really, really active in playing during mid to late. Well, actually, no, more early to late. Yeah, pretty much 7th edition. I played a lot of 7th edition, right? And uh, fuck me, there were so many horrible... Well, not over the top, but there has been quite a few. Like, you know, people do stand out. But I've never got to ring the police on someone, you know, Jesus fuck, it, it makes you wonder, it's like, you know, that is definitely one of the worst ones I've heard, and for it to be that bad that someone actually went ahead and made up and said, no that happened to me, says, like, you know, just how bad that person was, like, Jesus fuck, but no, um, I'm sure, look, Share your stories with us down below. Um, we've all come in contact with people like that. I don't really want to say who my ones are. Or well, I wouldn't say who they are. But like you know. I don't even want to give you a rundown. Because then they know finally. Like, Fuck them actually. I'll probably do a live stream someday. I'll, I'll do one and I'll, I'll talk, tell you guys about some of my experiences. Well within 40k anyway. But look. Um, let us know your ones down below. I really enjoyed this story. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I, I just don't get the arrogance when it comes to neckbeards, like genuine neckbeards that, like, it, it, you know what they are, they're like the ultimate form of the adult child and no one's ever told them no before and they just do not take it well one bit. It's it, it's really upsetting to watch and to actually like see someone behave in that manner is just disgusting in my opinion. There's nothing worse than that but like hey. Let us know down below, tell us your stories, and look, we'll just see what happens next, alright? I'll see you in the near future. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more. Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services. It's time to stop!